mathematics can be successfully applied to the explanation of the course of nature. Hello everyone, I am Dr. Jerulina Fernandez, Assistant Professor in the Department of Science at the Bhopal School of Social Sciences. The main aim of this module is to introduce you to calculus through definitions, formulas and examples. The audience of this module are students of science, management and engineering streams. So, in today's lecture, we will cover the following topics. First, the history of calculus. Second, the definition of calculus. Third, the application of calculus. Fourth, the classification of calculus. Fifth, the definition of function. Sixth, the definition of derivative of a function. Seventh, the definition of differentiation. 8th, the standard formulas of differentiation followed by some examples. So, we start our today's lecture with the very first topic that is the history of calculus. The word calculus is derived from the Latin word which means pebbles, where women used pebbles to perform calculations on abascus. So, the word got associated with computations. The history of calculus has two prominent names who share the credit for inventing calculus. The two mathematicians, Labneys and Isaac Newton, invented calculus independently around the 17th century. So now moving on to the definition of calculus. Calculus is the branch of mathematics that deals with the study of rate of change. Very often in a mathematics class, there arises a question that why calculus is not used in real life. Well, calculus is of utmost importance because it has a huge applicability in the subjects like physics, chemistry, biology, economics and statistics. The real power of calculus lies in the real life situations. For instance, in the field of chemistry, calculus can be used to predict the functions such as reaction rates and radioactive decays. In biology, calculus can be used to compute the rates such as death rates and birth rates. In economics, calculus can be used to compute the marginal cost and the marginal revenues, enabling the economist to maximize the profit in a particular setting. In statistics, calculus can be used to compute the survey data which gives a more approximate prediction. In physics, calculus can be used in a lot of applications. Some physical concepts that use the concepts of calculus are heat, electricity, light and motion. Now we are going to talk about the classification of calculus. Calculus is classified into two branches, differential calculus and integral calculus. Differential calculus determines the rate of change of a quantity, whereas integral calculus is reverse of differential calculus. Integral calculus finds the quantity where the rate of change is known. In simple words, differential calculus breaks things up into small quantities and determine the effect on whole, whereas integral calculus puts together small quantities to determine how whole is formed and is affected by the small changes. Now we are going to talk about the definition of function. But before that, let us consider an example. Consider a machine called as function. Now this machine has a restriction that to each input there is exactly one output. So there is an input which we say as x and an input which we call as y. Keeping these things in mind, we define function as let x and y be two non-empty sets, then there is a relation between x and y such that for every value of x and x, there is a definite value of y in y. Then y is said to be the function of x. This functional value is often denoted by y is equals to f of x where f denotes the function where y denotes the dependent variable and x denotes the independent variable. 
So coming on to the next topic that is the definition of derivative of a function. The derivative of a function y equals to f of x is the measure of the rate at which the value of y of the function changes with the change in the variable x. Let y equals to f of x be a continuous function in x. Let del x be an arbitrary small change in x and del y be the corresponding small change in y. The ratio del y upon del x is called the average rate of change of y in x. Then by the definition of function y is equals to f of x or this can be written as y plus del y is equals to f of x plus del x which can also be written as del y is equals to f of x plus del x minus y. Then by the definition of functions del y can be written as del y is equals to f of x plus del x minus f of x. Dividing both sides by del x and taking the limit del x tends to 0. Now if the limit exists then the rate of change instantaneous rate of change of y with respect to x is called the derivative of the function. It is also called as differential coefficient of y with respect to x. It is denoted by d over by dx, d of f of x by dx, f dash x and so on. Let y equals to f of x be any continuous function in x. Let del x be an arbitrary small change in x and del y be the corresponding small change in y. Then the ratio del y upon del x is called the average rate of change of y in x. Then by the definition of function y is equals to f of x or y plus del y is equals to f of x plus del x. Then del y can be written as f of x plus del x minus y. Again by the definition of function del y can be written as f of x plus del x minus f of x. Dividing del x on both the sides and taking limit del x tends to 0. If the limit exists then the average rate of change of y with respect to x is called the derivative of the function y with respect to x and is also known as differential coefficient of y with respect to x. It is denoted by dy by dx, df of x by dx and f dash x. I hope the topic derivative of a function is clear to you. Now I will be talking about the definition of differentiation. The process of finding out derivative of a continuous function is known as differentiation. Next moving towards the next topic that is the differential coefficient of some standard functions. In this lecture we will be studying five functions, five standard functions. The first one is differentiation of x raised to the power n and that is equal to n x n minus 1. The second formula is differentiation of log x to the base e. Here we are talking about the natural log and it is equal to 1 by x. Third, the differentiation of a raised to the power x. Here a is a constant and that is equal to a raised to the power x log a. The fourth formula is differentiation of e raised to the power ax. Here 
a is any constant and this is equals to a e raised to the power ax. Last but not least, the differentiation of log a to the base e. This is equal to 1 upon x, sorry, log x to the base a. This is equal to 1 by x log a to the base e. Let us try to understand these formulas with the help of some examples. Now we start with the question number 1 that is differentiate y is equals to f of y is equals to x cube with respect to x. Now taking differentiation on both the sides we will have to apply the first formula of differentiation that is d by dx of x raised to the power n and that is equal to n x n minus 1. So in this particular question the value of n is 3. So according to the formula that would become 3x raised to the power 3 minus 1 which is equal to 3x square. Now coming to the second question we have to differentiate y is equals to x raised to the power minus x with respect to x. Taking differentiation on both the sides here the power of x is minus 5 that is the value of n is minus 5. So applying the same formula we will get the value as minus 5 x raised to the power minus 5 minus 1 and that is therefore equals to minus 5 x raised to the power minus 6. So with this we come to the end of this lecture. I hope you had a learning experience. Thanks for watching. Thank you.